Hello students. Welcome to Smart Engineering Tutorials. Today we are going to see another topic of Unit 3 which is Shannon Fano Coating. In this syllabus there are two coding techniques. One is Shannon Fano Coating and the other is Huffman Coating. We will deal it in other video. So these two coding techniques are source coding methods which are used to convert a message into a binary code. The codes which we are going to develop by these techniques, they should satisfy the following conditions. The first condition is that no sequence of code can be obtained from each other by adding more binary digits to the shorter codes. This is known as the prefix property. For example, I have a code triple one, 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 one. This code is say of three bits. And let's say there is another code of 0, 1. So, this code is of 3 bits and this code is of 1 bit. So, here this shorter code cannot be converted into this bigger code or a longer code by adding any digit or sorry by adding any bit either 1 or 0 to this shorter code. Because if I add 1, it becomes 101. If I add 0, it becomes 001. Even then, the code is not as the same as of 111. So, this is called a prefix property that no shorter code can be converted into a genuine code by adding any prefix to it. The second uh, condition is that the transmission of an encoded message should be efficient. Here, since we are using binary codes, so we have only symbols 1 or 0 and the probability of occurrence of both 1 and 0 are same that is 0.5 and so they appear independently. Therefore, it is an efficient code. Now, the procedure used for obtaining a Shannon Fano co coding is divided into some steps. I mean we are going to obtain an encoded message with the help of this coding technique and those and this technique is divided into few steps like I have written here and we will see how to do this method or how to obtain a code with the help of a numerical. So the first step is that all the messages which are given in the question are written in decreasing order of their probabilities. The second step is that we divide the whole message set into two groups or we can say two subsets in such a way that the two subsets have equal or nearly equal probabilities. It will be very clear from the numerical. And the third point says that once we have divided the messages into two groups, a partitioning line is drawn and above the line, the messages are given zero code. Here this is said in third point, a zero code is assigned. So, we give zero code to the messages which are above the partitioning line and we give a one which is said in this fourth point. A one is given to all the messages to below the partitioning line. The fifth point says that the procedure, this whole procedure of dividing into groups further is continued until each subset contains only a single message or a single element. So, these steps are written, we have seen and now they will be very clear with the help of an example. We have a question here and usually the questions which come for this type of coding techniques they say that apply the Shannon Fano coding or the Huffman coding procedure for the following message and symbol. They will give you a message set which will comprise of all the messages and below that it will be a probability set which will give all the probability of occurrence of those messages. Like I have a question here with the messages x1, x2 up to x8 and below them I mean below the message set corresponding their probabilities are written. So, the question 
is given in fractions and what I have done is that I have converted them into uh, decimals so that it becomes easy for me to uh, uh, do the uh, data like I will be it is easy for arranging them in decreasing order and then further. So, we will start with the procedure. The first step says that we have to divide the message into two groups. So, first of all I have arranged the messages into decreasing order of their probabilities like x1 and x6 they have the highest probability of 0.25 then comes x2 and x8 they have 0.125 and then the remaining because all 4 have 0 0.0625. So, x1 and x6 have same probabilities that is 0 0.25 so I have written x1 at the top you cannot write x6 at the top because it will give a wrong code since we have to follow the order of the question when two elements have equal probabilities x1 and x5 have equal but x1 comes before in the question that is why I have written x1 at the top and x6 below it. After that x2 and x8 again have equal probabilities but the same logic x2 comes first then x8 in the question so I have put it I have put x2 before x8 and similarly x3 x4 and x5 and x7 they all have equal probabilities but I have followed the order of the question that is why I have written x3 first and then x4, x5 and then x7. Now the real problem or the real technique starts we will divide all these 7 messages into 2 groups such that first we will see whether the 2 groups can have equal probabilities if yes then we will go ahead if not we will try to divide into 2 groups such that they have nearly equal probabilities but here in this case we can see that we can divide them into two groups which have equal probabilities like here I have divided I have taken x1 and x6 as one group x2 to x7 as another group because if I add the probabilities of x1 and x6 it comes out to be 0.5 and if I add the probabilities of x2 to x7 it comes out to be 0.5 so they are equal not nearly just they are equal absolutely so encoded message this is the partitioning line which I have divided the two subsets before above the line I give a 0 code and below the line I give a 1 code. This is done two subsets I have got now further we have to divide till then until and unless there is only one single element left in each group. Now I will see the first subset has two elements both are having equal properties the one, one way of dividing in them further is to divide them into two groups x1 separate x6 separate and they both have equal probabilities. So, this is the partitioning line which divides x1 and x6 and above 0 and below the line 1 code. So, the first subset is complete with a single element. So, their encoding process is complete. Now, I focus on the second subset. Second subset I can see that it can be divided in a such a way that if I take x2 and x8 together it their probabilities become x2 and x8 it becomes 0 0.25 and similarly x3 to x7 they also have 0 0.25. So, they are divided into two groups which have equal probabilities. So, this partitioning line is drawn above 0 and below they are given 1. Further x2 and x8 one group is there I can further divide them into a single element just from between because both are having equal probabilities. So, a partitioning line is drawn above the line 0 below the line 1. Now, I focus on this group which has 6 x3 to x7 and here all are having equal probabilities. So, what I will do I will divide them in two elements in each group because if I add up x3 and x4 probabilities it will come out to be same as of x5 and x7. So, I have drawn the line above the line 0 below the line 1 but I have to divide them further so that it has only single element in one set. Again I have divided this is the partitioning line above 0 below 1. Similarly, the lower group I have drawn the partitioning line with equal probabilities and a single elements above the line 0 below the line 1. So, this these are the encoded messages for x1 0 0 it has 
two symbols. So length of the code is two. X six code is zero one. Length is two. X two code one zero zero. Length three. X eight. Length three. X X three. Length four. X four. Length four. X five. Length four. X seven. Length four. So we have got the encoded messages plus we have also made the table which has the length of the codes now the question usually comes that we'll have to find out the efficiency so we'll apply the shannon fano coding and find the efficiency the question will say find efficiency by using any coding method so the coding formula which we have seen earlier in the coding and its efficiency video i'll use the formula directly here eta is equals to hx which is the entropy divided by l bar which is the length of the code and it is average length of the code multiplied by log m to the base 2 i have written because we are converting them into a binary code so base 2 and m is the number of symbols so m is 2 Either zero or one. So symbol, two symbols are there. So log m to the base two is log two to the base two, and it comes out to be one. Eta is h x upon l bar into log m to the base two. H x is entropy. L bar is the average length of the code, and log m to the base two, base two for binary, and m is number of symbols. Since zero and one are used, so two symbols. So that's why log two to the base two is one. So we'll calculate eta, and it has this expression is reduced to h x entropy upon l bar. So we have to calculate h x and l bar separately. So we'll use the formula for entropy and the formula for l bar. So h x is equals to summation p k log one upon p k, and k is the number of messages. K is from one to seven. It is one to eight. We have eight messages. I'll put the values here. I'm not going to use the fractions, uh, decimals. I'll use the fractions instead because log has the base two, and all the probabilities which are given in fractions they are powers of two. So I'll use them straight away. One by four. I'll just show you the question here. One by four probability. One by eight. So we have all these values. All these use these fraction values x1, x2, and all. So the first probability of x1 is 1 by 4 log to the base 2 and 4 because it is 1 upon pk. So 1 upon pk will give you 1 upon 1 by 4. That is 4. Plus x2. X two has again a probability of one by eight log to the base two eight plus one by sixteen log to the base two sixteen plus one by sixteen log to the base two sixteen plus one by sixteen log to the base two sixteen plus one by four log to the base two four plus one by sixteen. Log to the base two sixteen plus one by eight log to the base two eight. So I have put all the values. I have put in, taken all the values in the order x one one by four, x two one by eight, one by sixteen, one by sixteen. Okay. So we have taken all the values here, and if I calculate by putting this value simple. No need to use calci for the simple calculation because this is log two to the base two and four is two square, so two will come in front and I'll just cancel out. It becomes one by two. And similarly, it is very all are powers of two, so it is becomes easy. And if you calculate, it becomes two point seven five bits per message. And now we require the value of L bar. We have calculated. H X. Now we'll calculate L bar. So L bar formula we'll use. 
we have seen the formula for L bar in coding and its efficiency itself. Its formula is summation P k into N k and k is from 1 to 8. So, P k is given in the question N k we have found which is the length of the code. In the table we have drawn and I will put all the values probability of message x 1 is 1 by 4 and the length of the code of x 1 is 2. So, multiplied by 2 plus x 2 plus x 2 its probability is 1 by 8 into length of x 2 is 3. Similarly, x 3 probability is 1 by 16 into length of x 3, x 3 length is 4 plus x 4 probability is 1 by 16 into length of x 4 is 4. Similarly, x 5 probability is 1 by 16 and length of code is 4 plus x 6 is 1 by 4 into length of code is 2 plus x 7 is probability is 1 by 16 into length of code x 7 it is here code is 4 length code is 4 plus last x 8 is 1 by 8 into length of the code is 3. Now, we will calculate this whole expression and it comes to be 2.75 letters per message. You can write letters per message or symbols per message. Main thing is that we have got L bar and H x and eta is H x upon L bar into 1 since log m to the base 2 is 1. So, H x is 2.75 bits per message, L bar is 2.75 letters per message and it becomes 1. So, eta that is efficiency in percentage is 1 into 100 that is 100 percent for this particular question. So, in this way we can calculate the efficiency if a question is given. Similarly, I will take another question but in the next video of Shannon Fano coding but somewhat different from this question. So, thank you and subscribe to know further notifications.